But Matt Leo went from being a plumber in Adelaide to playing American football for the Philadelphia Eagles. However, it was far from an easy road. Being on the other side of the world, not having any money, it was easy for me to think, why am I doing this? Stay tuned to learn about this inspiring journey. Setting up for my Zoom interview with NFL player Matt Leo. Got my coffee ready. 6.30 in the morning here in Melbourne. Matt's in LA right now. We're setting up the camera gear at his hotel. We've got something special for you guys. Let's go, Rush! Uh, I love your tats, man. Do you want to break down uh, the meaning behind your tats and what they are exactly? My dad, born on the small island of Rotuma, just off the waters of Fiji. My father, my cousin, has this, my uncles, all on the island, similar tattoos. Growing up, I went to uh, the island for the first time, uh, Suva, Fiji, just because it was the main island, it was closer than having to go to Rotuma, which was so small. So I had my mamasa, which is my ceremony to become a man. Getting this tattoo meant everything to me. It's my culture on my father's side, and having something that he has also means everything to me. What's your relationship like with your father? Like what characteristics did he teach you growing up? My dad's a hard worker, you know, really implemented that. Coming to Australia, you know, he really started from the bottom. Whatever company and, you know, he was working with, he always started from the ground up and worked his way to higher roles, but he always implemented as, you know, a young kid that, you know, hard work and just discipline is the fundamental things that he, you know, he distilled in me and my sister. Before moving to the US, what were you doing in Adelaide? So um, coming out of high school, you know, didn't really have too much of a, of a strong vision of where I wanted to go. My dad gave me the option, you know, electrician, plumber or carpenter was going to be the, the decision I had to make. I chose plumbing just because I had a friend that was already plumbing at the time. So I really just jumped into it. Didn't know if that was a career that I really wanted to do at the time. You know, like always, whatever I do, I try to do 100%. So you're not the, the standard tradie. If you tell us how tall you are and, and your weight as well, so we can get a sense of your size. Yeah, so 6'7", right now about 275, 280 pounds, which is definitely not your uh, average plumber's height. Now, American football isn't that common in Adelaide, let, let alone in Australia. And what fascinates me about your story is that you could have chosen, I guess you could say like an easier path and played rugby but you chose American football. When was the moment you decided, I want to become a professional NFL player? Mate, I clearly remember the time that, you know, I was sitting in TAFE SA, which is, you know, schooling for plumbing. Um, I was eating my smoker in the morning and I saw the 49ers and the Ravens playing the Super Bowl. I was sitting there and I was thinking, to myself, damn, I would do anything to have been, grew up and raised in America to play American football in high school, to live that, you know, American dream. On my fourth year as an apprentice, I was working on a uh, bridge that connected our, our main football stadium to uh, the city, 39, 40 degrees. And I was working with the tradesman at the time and we just got into the conversation of sports. You know, I told him that I, I shouldn't be doing this shit. I'm 6'7", and I'm too big to be doing plumbing, especially crawling in little ducks. We uh, slowly led into a, a discussion about how this Australian happened to go over in a Division II school as a punter. You know, that's kind of where it kicked off. The spark in me kind of kicked off. Matt made the decision to chase his dream and play American football. However, he didn't realize what was waiting for him once he landed in the USA. I clearly remember arriving in Yuma, Arizona at about 1 a.m. in the morning. It's one of the last flights arriving in that night. I get my bags, the airport's closing. I had to move onto the street and wait for a cab. Get into a cab, arrive at my JUCO around 1.30. My coach at the time arrive, meets me at the dorm doors in a do-rag in his pajamas, takes me to my dorm. I get to bed at 3 a.m. and I'm laying there looking at the ceiling thinking it's either fight or flight. You know, the next morning I wake up, a four hour sleep and camp starts and it was basically hit the ground running. So after being one year um, as a walk on, having to pay my way, um, ran out of funds, you know, got to down to about 80 cents in my account, which was the hardest thing. You know, being on the other side of the world, not having any money, um, can't work. You know, wanting to go back home to Australia, you know, have that little safety bubble. Family's there, mum and dad are there. Life was good, grew up in a little, you know, little community where everything's comfortable, had a job that was paying, you know, well. It was easy for me to think, 
you know, why am I doing this? Didn't start off as a, as a prospect. I was bottom of the depth chart as a defensive end. Had to work my way up as that. You know, I'd never played before. So having to learn the game while being you know, in the US was already behind what a lot of guys do. And when I was completely out of money, I had to start looking for work, paying cash in hand. I um, became a furniture removalist, you know, moving people's furniture. I became a cheerleader in the, the uh, spring, having to pay for my book scholarship. So I became, I went on scholarship as a cheerleader, which is the craziest thing. And a lot of people don't know that about me. Much respect to you for the, the hustle. Uh, it makes it even sweeter to be in the position you're in now. What was uh, the Americans, I guess, like first impression of, you know, this great big Aussie kid coming over to play football? Yeah, you know, I remember meeting up, you know, after the first day in the dorms, you know, guys coming out making their ramen noodles in the microwave and, you know, being an Aussie in an American domain was, was unique. You know, guys were like, saw my height and size and straight away they're like, oh, you're definitely going to the NFL. You know, hitting the field, putting a helmet and a shoulder pads for the first time. You know, this was a game that doesn't just take strength and speed, attributes that, you know, I was blessed to have. This was details, being able to know your assignment, being able to be consistent consistent on your assignment. I have so much respect for the game because the detail that's in this game is just so beautiful. With hard work and determination, Matt was pursuing his dream of playing American football. He progressed from junior college to a major football college at Iowa State. Matt was getting one step closer to his ultimate goal of playing in the NFL. Having decided Iowa State, you know, again, moving to a city that I never thought I'd live in, had to Google Iowa for the first time. It was a, uh, you know, being in the cornfields now where it's flat and it snows was completely different to me. Playing, you know, in front of 70,000 local fans that, you know, come every weekend was absolutely unbelievable. To play in stadiums like Texas Longhorns where there's 114,000, you know, sold out is, is an incredible feeling. Describe that feeling when you made the Philadelphia Eagles team and stepped on the field for the first time. Being selected to the Eagles was a huge accomplishment to me and my family. To know that a dream that you know you would pursued for the last six years and you know the dedication that you'd put towards it, the sacrifices you had made, you know, leaving family behind, the the struggles that I went through in you know junior college to to finally make it to a, you know, a team, and not just that, to go to a team that is known for its grit and its hard work meant even more. So, you know, being announced um, to go to Philadelphia and telling my mom and dad for the first time and hearing their joy was priceless to me. Like always, the first thing that went through my head is now I just have to, you know, take a level up, work even harder. You know, I had goals going into the league and, you know, things that I wanted to do and I knew I still had such a high ceiling to develop and I really wanted to do that. Philadelphia was the best place for me to go and I've loved it ever since I've been there. Currently the Philadelphia Eagles are one of the top teams in the comp. What are your personal goals for this season? Yeah, so you know 6-0 is such an incredible you know beginning for a season and the craziest thing is you know the team has so much more growth. We're excited for what's going on. For myself, you know, the goal is to continually to develop. You know, every week, you know, there's things that I push, you know, areas that I give myself, you know, two things that I want to improve every week. And, you know, those things that I try to, you know, make sure I get done. My mindset on this game, I still feel like I have so much growth and, you know, personal things that I want to accomplish before it's all said and done. Performing at the highest level often means dealing with a lot of pressure. You're playing in front of huge crowds, there's a lot of travel involved, you're playing with a, a lot of big names. How do you stay focused in a game? You know, it's funny, when I had more nerves when I played in junior college in front of 50 family members of teammates than I do in the NFL. I enter the field, I do my pre-game ritual. Um, once, I, once I run onto that field, I really don't look at the fans. I feel like if I make eye contact with anyone in that stands and you know, the reaction they get might change and might knock me off. <laughs> <laughs> and look, being a professional athlete, you're always gonna have highs and lows. When you have days where you don't feel like training or playing in a game, what keeps you going? 
you know, the mindset is a crazy thing. I'm just telling myself how lucky I am to be there. You know, to be in a locker room with guys that, you know, I used to see on TV and look at now being beside them in a locker or in, you know, the meeting room, having them, calling them brothers, you know, is surreal to me. You know, to be able to practice and play alongside guys that absolute legends in the form of football and, you know, will go down in the Hall of Fame. Well, speaking of that, you're surrounded by some of the best athletes in the world. In your eyes, what makes a great leader? To me, a leader is, you know, a guy that is who he is on and off the field. For me, I look at guys in my locker room that are genuine on and off the field, how they treat people. This is just a, a sport. This is what we play. This is, you know, just a period of time that we're playing. For me, a leader is, you know, someone who, you know, encourages guys, who brings the best out of guys, who bring the best out of the community and, you know, the team. So your position is defensive end. I'll be honest, I'm still getting my head around NFL and how the, the whole game works. Can, can you give me a little information exactly into what your role is in the game? Yeah, so I, I flux between uh, D end and D tackle, so both interior and then outside. So as a D end, um, you work the edge, you set an edge in the run game, and then when it becomes third down, fourth down, and it's a pass play, you're working that edge as fast as possible around an O lineman and trying to get the quarterback before he throws the ball. And as a D tackle is uh, run versus run, you're taking a double team off two 300 pound men, you're trying to uh, split 600 pounds <laughs> as fast as you can. Um, in pass, it's the same thing. You want to work and move as fast as possible, trying to get to the quarterback, which is anywhere between 1.7 to 2.6 seconds. Damn, oh, that's, that's cool. <laughs> Looking back at your journey now, would you do anything differently? Mate, there is nothing that, you know, I would say I'd do differently because, you know, every trial that I went through just fueled me even more. It was something that, you know, I feel like if it was just handed to me, it wouldn't maybe have meant as much to me if it was. I still have so many goals that I have, although I'm, you know, proud of the steps that I've taken, you know, to get to where I am. To be, you know, a guy that was just working on work sites seven years ago, building a stadium that is the same size of what I play in now is, you know, I still pinch myself. So there's still so many things that I thrive to accomplish. Now there's going to be a lot of young kids watching this and following your journey. What advice have you got for someone that is trying to achieve their dream? I would love to give back to, you know, Australia and the youth that are coming up that want to pursue this. For me, you know, telling a young guy or even myself back, you know, when this all started is, you know, believe in yourself. And that sounds so cliche. When I say believe in yourself, I say that because I strongly believe that, you know, that self doubt that gets distilled in you from, you know, outside voices around you, whether it was, you know, when I was leaving Australia or when I first got to, you know, America, you know, that it can be so toxic. That's what I really want to show these uh, young guys, you know, in Australia that why can't you be in America and be the next guy to, to play on Sunday.